everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika. Are you ready for a lengthy get ready with me? Because I am going to be doing the get ready with me with the Shop My Stash products from October, which I always do, but today, like last month, I have a bit of a spin for you because we are going to be chatting about the remaining questions that people ask me in my Q&A that I asked for in September. So, since I sort of did all the personal topics in the previous video, I thought that we could tackle the other questions which were mostly makeup related in today's video. And before we get started, I, I just have to rave about this. Um, so I think in the last video, I told you that I will be starting a new job very soon. It's only a few days away before I start. <laughs> and as a like, thank you, <laughs> my coworkers from my current job uh, actually bought me Harry Potter related bits. So I got a cookbook, which I showed you in my Harry Potter video over on my book channel. In case you didn't know, I also have a book channel. And they got me some Storybook Cosmetics brushes with these like wand kind of handles. So I just thought I could show them in this video and see if maybe I can use some of these as well. So if you see me using different brushes than I normally do, because I always go for the same like 10 brushes in every video I do. I think I did a video about that earlier in the year, so I could link that in the eye above if you're, a, if you're curious what brushes I mostly use. But yeah, maybe I can use some of these to uh, get to look started, to try them out, because I, I just wash them to make sure they're clean. And uh, then we're gonna go and use the rest of the brushes as well, but I just have them here and I thought I'd show you. So I'm going to be doing my makeup uh, using the Shop My Stash products from October. And I thought that just for a bit of fun, <laughs> I could go in with an OG, like fall staple for me, the Modern Renaissance by ABH. I wanna show you my staple fall look with the berries. I will make sure as per usual to link everything in the description box down below. But for the most part, we're just going to be chatting about the questions that you guys gave me. So let's just get started with primer. This is the ColourPop Pretty Fresh Primer. So let me just get started with the first question here. Um, as I'm putting primer on, how old were you when you started playing with eyeshadows? What was your first eyeshadow palette? That's what. I, actually, this kind of question came up a few times, so maybe we'll come across it again a little bit later. I did try to organize these a little bit to have sort of like a build-up. Um, but yeah, I didn't really get into makeup until I was a little bit older. Uh, I definitely wasn't someone who already started... Well, I did wear makeup as a teenager, but only when I like went out with friends. Like I didn't really wear it to school or anything or like on the daily. So I didn't really make makeup part of my routine until I was already at work as a teacher in my like mid twenties or so. Um, but I definitely have always been into eyeshadow. So even back when eyeshadow wasn't really a thing, the only thing I would wear was eyeshadow. In fact, I hated wearing mascara. So <laughs> I would wear eyeshadow. And at the time it was like, like very fanciable to wear green eyeshadow all the way from the lid all the way to your brow bone. It was the early 2000s people. Makeup aesthetics were very different back then. Um, so I definitely, I had this go-to look for like club nights, which was like a green shadow all the way from the lash line up to my brow. And I would put a yellow cream eyeshadow that creased like hell all over it. And then I would top it off with a gold. I remember doing that. <laughs> and I had this really nice, it was like a loose pigment by Bourgeois. It came in like a little pot with a brush that screwed into it and then you could just dip the brush in and then use the shadow and it had this really pretty like bluey purple duochrome. It was like a white but then it had this shift. I used that in the inner corner all the time. So I wasn't much of a makeup pro product person for sure but I did have a couple of like go-to things. So I'm just going to be priming my lids now with the Lorac behind the scenes eyeshadow primer. So yeah, that, that was sort of like my first forays into eyeshadow. So I remember eyeshadow always being a thing, like just always. <laughs> it's just always been my favorite thing. And then uh, the other, what was your first eyeshadow palette? So back at that time, eyeshadow palettes were in the thing. Um, uh, we, we just had singles. I still actually have that green shadow. It would be fun to see if I can still swatch it. I would never wear it anymore, but that high school green eyeshadow by Bourgeois that I used all the time. 
I still have that somewhere in my makeup memories box. So I definitely, somewhere in 2021, I keep mention, mentioning this makeup memories box I have. I will show it to you at some point, um, but it's, I have all my content planned out for the rest of the year. So it's not gonna happen anytime soon, but I will. Uh, so if you'd like to see my very first green eyeshadow, then stay tuned. <laughs> um, but yeah, first palette, like, like a proper, proper palette. Something like Urban Decay Naked One, because that, that's, that's the product that got the palette train started, you could say. So I was definitely around for that. Before that, it was just quads and quintets and trios. You didn't really get a 12 pan palette. It just wasn't a thing. I think I actually have one of the older Urban Decay palettes. I have their Deluxe Shadow Box, but I don't remember whether I got that first or the Naked One first. I think I got that first. That and the, I decluttered it a long time ago, the Sustainable Palette, I think it was called. Let's just do foundation. The Catrice True Skin Foundation. Um, this is a new launch from Catrice, so of course I wanted to try it. Guys, if you have dry skin, stay away, stay away. This is going to be, like this, this is the reason why I'm using it in today's video, to show you again what happens when you put on this foundation. Uh, I've used it over two different primers, so I know it's the foundation and not the primer I was using, but it won't stick to my nose. Let's talk about question number two. If you started a makeup brand, what would, the, what would be the first three products you would launch and you can't answer eyeshadow? Well, actually, I wouldn't launch eyeshadow first because I'm super picky when it comes to that. So I definitely would want to know a little bit more. So I think what I would want to start off with is lipstick uh, because I actually think that a lipstick makes a much bigger difference in your overall makeup look than eyeshadow does, even though it is like my favorite product and it was also one of the first makeup products I ever used. Um, so yeah, lipstick, I would definitely launch like first because I would want to do something with a color product. Um, and then I think like a brow gel, because again, brows I think make a huge, huge difference in your makeup look. Uh, so like a good, like, kind of brow gel that has a, like a texture or something like what I'm going to be using in a minute, the Essence Make Me Brow, but then like my version in more shades. Um, <laughs> that for sure. Um, and then the third product, um, not a base product. I'm actually not that much of a base product kind of person. That was like the last thing I added was like primer and foundation and things like that. I was not into that. Maybe, maybe something like a bronzer or something. Cause I think like, Bronzer can be used very easily as eyeshadow and if you then make it like a double pan with like a shimmering side and a matte side then you pretty much have an eye look as well as something that you can use on the face to warm things up and make everything look a little snazzy. So I was very happy that I also brought in the Zoeva concealer. This is a little too light for me though. This is their Authentic Skin Perfector and this is like the foundation from Zoeva that I tried last month, really lovely. So. Shall we answer another question? How would you like to design your own eyeshadow palette if you had an opportunity to do so? Actually, I did a video about this. So I can just link you in the eye above to my perfect cool tone palette because I sort of did a fantasy palette kind of thing, I think over the spring summertime, where um, I sort of talk exactly about this. I talk about how many pans it would have, what the packaging design would look like. Like I go into everything there and then which 15 shades I would put in, in it. And of course it would be cool toned. Cool, cool toned. So uh, I have a video up with that. So I, I don't remember exactly which shades I put in. Uh, but I know there was a stunning navy from the Matt and Muerte, Melt and Muerte palette in there. So nice. Uh, question number four. If you were to make your perfect six pan eyeshadow palette, which eyeshadows would you choose? So the palette I made in that video had 15 pans because I was like, I want it to be neutral, but I want to put in colors and I want there to be enough mattes and shimmers for everyone. So that's why I ended up with a 15 pan. And that's also sort of like 12 to 15 pans is like my ideal amount. So six shades is actually a little challenging. So let me think about this. Uh, we would definitely need to have a taupe and a teal, <laughs> for sure. And then like a matte transition shade, because I do like that. Um, maybe like a good plum, like a plum to deepen things up. 
and then like a nice inner corner highlight, something bright and shimmery. Uh, Starboy by Luxie. I know I put that in that 15 pan palette. That would for sure go into this again. I think that's five. So we have an inner corner highlight, a matte transition, a dark matte plum, like a cool tone, like a cool tone purpley kind of shade, uh, but then matte to deepen things up, a teal, a taupe, maybe like a really good navy shimmer. Just, I love navy shimmer, you guys. It's actually, I think that now that I've filmed all of my like single shadows all together, like in terms of like singles, I have quite a few navy shades because I just love a good navy shimmer. So maybe that, I think those would be the six for sure. Uh, number five, if you could choose a collaboration, which brand with which influencer celebrity TV show movie would you choose? Um, I'm going to be a bit controversial here and I would like to ask people to please stop doing collaborations. I hate them. I really do not like collaborations, even though there's going to be a product in today's video that is part of a collaboration that I did like, but for the most part, I'm like, uh, like, like, I get it from a marketing perspective, I do, but I don't like it because here's the thing, very often, I don't find the products worth it to buy just because it's a collaboration. I know that there's some people who will say like, oh, I bought this palette because it's a collaboration between brand X and so-and-so, and I'm like, that has never, ever, ever been the reason for me to buy something just because it's a collaboration. I do, I do kind of like, uh, oh, what's the director's name again? The one from Grand Bud Budapest Hotel. Like he always has like really cool color stories in his movies and I really like that. And I did, just finished watching Ratchet on Netflix and I really, really loved like those vibrant pastel -y kind of 60s kind of shades that are in there. There's the aesthetic of that series was absolutely lovely. Sure, like Harry Potter is like one of my favorite things. So yeah, these like brushes, but this is not a collaboration because I don't think Storybook Cosmetics actually has the rights to anything Harry Potter related. Like that's the thing, like the Storybook Cosmetics like wizardry kind of palette. You would think I'm all over that thing because I love Harry Potter, but I just don't like the shades that are in there. So then I don't buy it. But is there anything I'm really wishing would happen? No. Uh, this is the powder I just put on, the Hourglass Veil Powder. Moving on to brows, so I've got my Etude House Drawing Eyebrow Pencil uh, still. Um, I'm actually a little sick of it again. Just like with the Essence Pe Pencil I was using before, I'm sick of the product, but it's a bit too red tone for my liking now that I've used it enough. And of course my old favorite, the Essence Make Me Brow. I thought they were discontinuing it because it was on the Leaving Us Soon kind of page of their website, but then they now release the new products and it's still here. So Essence, please don't mess with us again, please. Um, question number six, if you can only use one brand for your whole face, skincare exempted for the rest of your life, what brand would it be? Urban Decay. There is all, <laughs> I don't even have to think about it for that long uh, because Urban Decay is like the only brand, of course, currently not all of the products are in their line anymore, um, but, for instance, they've discontinued most of their blushes and their highlights and all that. So you can no longer buy it. Uh, but in terms of like the Urban Decay products that I have, I can do a full face and I love every single one of those products. I just do. Uh, so Urban Decay is by far one of my favorite brands. And it's the reason why up to now, <laughs> Urban Decay has been pretty much the only, <laughs> um, the only high-end brand that's featured in my full face series because of that, because I simply owned all of those products already in my collection and I was interested to try the products that I hadn't tried yet. Seven, what will be a good and boring beginner's palette with everyday neutrals but not leaning orange at all and not too great either. For hooded eyes, so maybe not too shimmery, I find it difficult to find the perfect one. I have the answer for you. Again, I don't have to think about this at all. Tarte, Tartlet in Bloom. It's got cool tones, it's got neutrals, it's got warm tones, it has three shimmers, everything else is matte. It lays it out perfectly for you because every single row you have is a look, so you can go cool tone, neutral, or warm. It's not too orange, it's not too gray. You can mix and match once you feel a bit more confident about it. So yeah, for me, what I always recommend to people if you want just a foolproof beginner's neutral palette, Tartlet in Bloom by Tarte. It's simply the best. 
till this day, I don't think anything beats it. Question number eight. What was the product or experience that made you realize that makeup was such a passion for you? Hmm. Um, like I mentioned, I didn't really get into makeup until later. I was a, um, I only use makeup when I go clubbing kind of person uh, for years. So I had a bit of makeup, but I definitely like, of course, when I was a teenager, we didn't have this resource like YouTube and people chatting about makeup all the time. It was definitely a struggle at first, but made me realize that makeup was such a passion for me. It's, it wasn't one thing, actually. It's been a very, very gradual process with me. Like, if I look back, like, if you'd have told my 20-year-old self that 15 years later, I would be on YouTube making videos about makeup, I would probably have laughed at your face. <laughs> because I was like the least makeup y person at all. Like, I had spiky short hair. I was a complete tomboy for most of my like childhood and teens. And the only reason why I really got into makeup is because I had a colleague at my first teaching job who came to school wearing makeup all of a sudden. And I was like, oh, you look really nice. Why, you know, I haven't seen you wearing much makeup. And she was like, yeah, well, I, uh, I, I just wanted to look a little bit more awake. And I was also having these like 6 a.m. wake up calls. So I was like, that sounds like a good idea. And that's when I sort of started tracking it down, you know, to see if I could wear makeup. And that's when I started trying things out. So for me, perhaps becoming a teacher would be the experience. Um, I'd like to ask you, can you remember what the first item of makeup was you ever bought and the first palette you got? So first palette for sure an Urban Decay one. Um, and when it came to like makeup -y bits, it's not really makeup per se, but beauty related. I was a nail polish fiend in my teens. Like I was 12 and I was, all I would wear was like black nail polish at first. I'm going in with bronzer, by the way. This is Max Factors, ooh, cream bronzer, light gold. It's a powder, it's not a cream bronzer, but this is fairly nice. I do feel it oxidizes a bit on me uh, as I wear it. So it looks really nice on first, but then it becomes a bit darker. So I'm not gonna put too much on. Um, so yeah, nail polish was where I got sort of got started. And then that green shadow, as I remembered, from, uh, as I already mentioned, from Bourgeois. And then for highlighter, I'm gonna go in with Melt. This was new this month, and I did review this on my blog as well. So if you'd like to see a full review of this, it's a really, really stunning highlight. I really, really like this. It's got just the perfect amount of sheen. You'll see it in a minute. Um, <laughs> question number 10. What is your favorite makeup item in your entire collection? Just one? Can there be only one? There, because there's a lot that I really like. Um, I have so many things that I love that I really, like if you're pay, making me pick just one thing, oh, what would it be? I think my Urban Decay Vice 3, because just because of how much effort it took me to get my hands on that palette, because I realized too late when it had sold out everywhere, that I wanted to own that palette. So I had it shipped to a friend in the US. I was gonna meet up with her anyways for a concert. So she drove it across four states for me. And then it was in my uh, luggage for, I don't know, the rest of the trip, like three weeks. I lugged it around North America with me. So uh, that, that palette cost me sweat and tears and uh, yeah, so that's definitely a special one. Um, so this is what the highlight looks like by itself. By the way, sorry about the noise. I have neighbors building a new kitchen, so I can't help this. This is the only time I have today to film, okay? <laughs> so yeah, this is what the highlight looks like. Doesn't that look stunning on the cheek? It's so, so perfect with my skin tone. I love it. For blush, just after we mentioned not liking collaborations, this is the Ofra and Samantha March blush. This is in Chiclet. And I think this is two shades from the existing Ofra line, if I'm not mistaken. I just like to dab my brush right in the middle and then apply it to the cheeks. And it's a very pretty shade. I was afraid it might be too dark, but I found out it works really, really well with a lot of different looks. Uh, 11, if you could only own one eyeshadow, so not a palette, just one single, 
which one would you choose? And for this, I have a very easy answer, which it would be Burberry's Rosewood. Now I just did my single shadow collection, so I'll link it in the eye above. And in that video I swatch it, it's my favorite, my ultimate favorite, one shadow and you're done kind of look. It has a huge dent. If I could keep just one eyeshadow, it would be that. So my camera just cut me off and I don't know exactly where, but I've quickly primed my lids with my MAC Paint Pot in Painterly, and I also used the Body Shop uh, Color Crush eyeshadow, which is currently looking like this. On to the eye look, so I'm going to pause because I think we're about halfway. Um, so uh, we're right on time here with the question. So I've got this here. Uh, so I'm going to be using uh, red ochre for sure, Venetian red and love letter. And what I, si what I ma mainly like to do is to just put red ochre all over the lid, blend it out with Venetian red and then use love letter along the edge and then a bit of red ochre on the lower lash line. But because I just finished single shadow week, I was very much inspired by something I said myself in that video. So I wanna first, I also wanna show you these. So this is a Chanel Illusion d'Ombre and this is in the shade Rouge Noir. So I'm gonna lay this down just a little bit on the outer edge here to deepen things up so that when we put red ochre over it, that it's going to sort of look a little bit more dimensional than just red ochre. And then I'm going to be dabbing New Moon on top of it to give it a bit of sparkle. And I might want to use this in the inner corner as well. So I'm going to be using these cream shadows to sort of give the look a bit more oomph. Um, and then I think for at least putting on red ochre, I'm going to be using this very fluffy brush because that's the technique I like to use with these really uh, dark berry shades is to use, I usually use, what do I normally use? I normally use my Real Techniques uh, shading brush, base shadow brush. That's usually what I use and I just kind of like fluff it all over and take the other one and fluff it into the crease. And so I'm going to keep this handy just in case the Storybook Cosmetics one isn't working because it's more angular. And I do have a very fluffy one here too, but it may be too fluffy. Okay, so I'm just going to use this with my finger and moving on to the next question. Uh, do we want to zoom in? I'm going to keep you here. Do you mind? Because then I can, then hopefully the focus isn't thrown off. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 12, which decade or era is your favorite for makeup looks? I've got a few. There's a reason why I own such a deep dark red. <laughs> because one of my ultimate favorite eras for makeup is the 1920s. I actually, it's in Dutch though, I do have a makeup tutorial up where I do a 1920s inspired makeup look. Like I mentioned, it's in Dutch because it was the first year that NYX organized the Face Awards in the Netherlands and I decided to just give it a whirl. I didn't win, I didn't even make it through the first round, um, but it was fun. <laughs> I entered, I had fun doing the look, so uh, I'll put it in the description box for anyone who's interested in that, it was years ago. I definitely think I have better makeup skills right now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this this shade is very much very perfect for like a very 1920s kind of like smoky dark eye That silent movie kind of look so that's definitely one and my other favorite era is actually the 1950s Even though I can do eyeliner for the life of me But I really like that sort of like classic like very basic eye with a red lip That's just 1950s to me. Of course they did it in the 40s as well but in the 50s, brows were a little bit more like this and not so thin. So um, that's my only, like I love the 30s and the 40s as well, but those thin brows, like, <laughs> like the 1920s were terrible too when it came to thin brows, but like in the 1930s, people would just shave off their eyebrows. Like, <laughs> not me. Question number 13, I was wondering if you can recommend your holy grail drugstore products. Well, let's just start here. <laughs> Essence, make me brow. If you've never tried it, get it. It's lovely. Catrice Glamandol Volume uh, Waterproof Mascara. Love it. Abs absolute, absolutely amazing. The new Catrice More Than Glow Highlighter. Instant favorite. I really like Essence br Blushes. Like they do different renditions all the time. I'm gonna go in with Red Ochre. Um, but yeah, they, uh, they just do some great blushes that are not that expensive. And so Essence for sure, Maybelline for mascara, uh, that Falsies push-up, what is it, Falsies Lash? Lash Lift, that's the one I like. 
that's for sure something that I really, really like. Um, what else? Oh, L'Oreal Infallible Foundation. My favorite drugstore foundation. Uh, the uh, Freshwear. Concealer, uh, Makeup Revolution, Conceal and Divine, Define Concealer, that's my favorite drugstore concealer. Primer, uh, Catrice Dis Discontinued, my favorite one, which is their uh, Fresh It Up Primer. They're supposed to be coming out with a new hydrating primer, but I haven't seen it anywhere yet. So I haven't been able to try it to see if it compares. Um, and then for... Hmm, this is quite a nice brush. And then it's a bit big for me, but for something like this, it's fine. I don't really have a favorite drugstore powder. Maybe the Catrice Nude Illusion. I do really like it. It's a loose powder. It's like one of my all-time favorites. I've done mascara. My favorite bronzer you can no longer buy <laughs> from the drugstore, so we're not going to recommend that. I've done highlight, I've done blush, essence for sure, uh, and eyeshadow. I think it's drugstore price point, but you can't buy it everywhere. I definitely think Juvia's Place just takes the cake. They just do the best affordable eyeshadow. So I've just set the look up here. Do you see how you create a really nice gradient by putting that Chanel shade just on the outer edge here? And I'm just going to put it on that tip here and then we're gonna use it to blend out this shade like this is going to be an intense berry eye people don't, don't be scared um do we have another question um oh skincare 14 what's your holy holy grail skincare product um so i've mentioned a lot on here how much i love the body shop for skincare and my favorite line from theirs is their um, aloe vera line and they do this foaming face wash that is great if you have sensitive skin and that would be like my holy grail product I keep it around all the time like if it's if I run out of one even if I have no intention to use it I'll just buy a backup like I just need to have that product in my life like I just needs to be there um, let me see um, 15 I would like to know if you have tried any eyeshadow from the clean makeup lines and what are your thoughts on clean makeup in general ie uh, or uh, for instance Ilia Aether Kozas all the brands you're mentioning in this question I cannot buy where I live so uh, no I've never tried them um, I have tried eyeshadow from a German brand that I found at the dr German drugstore it was like Natur Cosmetique or whatever it was called in German. And that was a really nice like taupey kind of lavender kind of shade. It was pretty, but it was very similar to that Burberry shade that I mentioned loving. So that's why I declared that German shade. <laughs> um, I don't really have thoughts on these like clean beauty brands. The only thing I do know is that, yes, I like the fact that they are clean, but this is also like my gripe with a lot of things like, you know, ethical fashion and things like that is with clean makeup because it very often doesn't contain certain ingredients that make your makeup actually last longer it may actually be that you need to throw it out very easily like very quickly because it doesn't have the kind of preservatives that other makeup has that's what i've heard i'm not sure i've never tried these brands i don't know anything about their longevity so um yeah <laughs> that's uh so yeah, how do I feel about clean beauty? If it is as good as regular products, then I'm all for it. I mean, I think we can all do more for the environment. I know I certainly can. I try to do my bit. Uh, not really something I make content about, but I'm someone who like only re uses reusable water bottles and reusable sandwich bags. And like I've gotten rid of a lot of disposable plastics in my lifetime, but of course, on this channel, I talk about fashion, about makeup, so from that perspective, everything's going to look excessive, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely something that I am aware of and I try to do my bit, but it's not something that really goes with the channel I have. Ooh, I really like this. Like, I just love how it, you can really use Venetian Red to just blow it up and just, I can just keep going with this shade. <laughs> uh, and now I, I want to use... My fluffy Zoeva brush. I use this all the time, you guys. This is the 224 Looks to Fine Crease. And I'm going to go in with Love Letter. And this is a very fluffy brush that allows you to use just the tiniest of tiniest amounts. And I'm just going to sort of buff this along that top here. 
And that way we get a really nice gradient. All right, next one, 16. What discontinued product in your collection have you never been able to find a suitable dupe for? Um, I'm not really someone who goes looking for dupes. Uh, I was definitely like when this, when I thought this one discontinued, I went to town and I bought like five of them. So uh, <laughs> uh, I, that's sort of like my tactic almost, you could say, to try to, um, yeah, to then just make sure I still can use that product if I know it's discontinued. Um, but it's not a makeup item that I'm a bit gutted about that it's been discontinued, but it's a perfume actually. Because one of my favorite perfumes from this time of year is Love by Chloe. And this, this perfume was discontinued. And I've now found, with the help of Fragrant Fragrantica, I'm not sure how to pronounce that website, but that perfume website that you can always like consult if you're looking for something new to try. And they recommend trying a Pull&Bear store brand perfume that it's very similar. So I definitely want to buy that to see if it is similar because I still have some of my Chloe left. I only got it in a 30 ml bottle at the time because I was trying out so many different perfumes. So I would be very gutted if that was ever, like if it ran out, because perfume is definitely something that I do use up. And um, yeah, that, uh, that is definitely something where I'm like, ooh, I'd like to find a dupe for that. But with makeup, I don't really have that because very often um, <laughs> I just have that issue where I have so much makeup that I don't really run out of it. So even if something is discontinued, I know there's going to be like the next best thing. Urban Decay Naked 2, I simply bought a backup of it. It was discontinued. I found out. I found one on eBay. I bought it. I now have a backup. I don't have to worry about finding a dupe for Urban Decay Naked 2. Like that's what I do. I would then buy a backup. If I know something's going to be discontinued and I can still get my hands on it, I just buy a backup so it won't be out of my life. Ooh. Can we just take a moment? <laughs> I'm going to zoom in. We're, we're, I'm going to shut up about these questions for a minute. And we're just going to take a moment. Do you just see how you can create a, such a stunning gradient with these berry shades? Like, I love this. And especially once, once it's finished, it's going to make my eyes look more green. Speaking of the lower lash line, let's just uh, start off with that. So I think I'm going to use one of my other Storybook Cosmetics uh, uh, um, eyeshadow uh, brushes and I think there's actually two of the same like they seem to have the same handle and they also seem to have the same shape so I'm not sure if that's supposed to be the case this was a gift so I don't know whether what this set was supposed to entail but this is a very stiff brush so I think it can be very good for like and it's small too to pick up a bit of this cream shadow and to put it along the lower lash line let's try this making sure I close it really nice and taut so it can't dry out. Let's go back into another one of these questions. 16. What, uh, no, 17. That's where we're at. In, in the 10 years that you've been blogging, we've all grown a bit wiser. So have you found it challenging adjusting to skin changes, especially eye makeup in general? So again, I already mentioned a few times, I got into the makeup game a little bit later than most people. And so for me, I don't really know what my makeup would have looked like if I were to try to do things like this because I wasn't doing my makeup like this when I was 18, 19, like I just wasn't. So I don't have anything to really compare it to because I haven't really been doing makeup like this until I was already in my 30s. <laughs> the only thing that I am noticing is that when I do shadows, like I, I struggle doing things like liner and stuff because my lids just aren't super smooth and they just kind of like, you can sort of see the skin <laughs> moving around a little bit. And that's also why if I do anything on the lower lash line, I do this and it's not to pull because I'm not really pulling or anything, but it's just to try and keep it steady. Uh, and so it won't like, because if I just do it like this, I can barely get the color to transfer to my lid because it just moves around too much. Uh, and now I'm going to do something very daring because I just want to smoke out that lower lash line a bit. So I'm going to be using Venetian Red on a, what's this called? Zoeva Deluxe Grease 228. And this is my favorite brush for doing something like this. I just like dab it in a little bit. And I'm just going to start here on the outer edge and smoke it out. I'm going to go in with New Moon. And since this is a shimmer, I'm just going to dab it onto the center of the lid 
just to make sure there is a little bit of sparkle there. And this is like my favorite thing to do. Oh yeah, oh, this is great. 18, you have so many eyeshadow palettes. Do you ever feel like you are neglecting some? Yes, I do. Um, especially in the past year, I've started to feel that way. So I'm actually, I have a bit of a plan for the new year <laughs> when it comes to acquiring new palettes because I definitely feel like I'm pretty solid on having tried everything I want to try. So I'm going to sort of set myself a bit of a challenge to buy no more than two palettes per month on average. So there could be a month where I buy nothing, <laughs> but there could also be months where I buy like six because if I haven't bought anything the other months. So I'm definitely going to limit it so that hopefully springtime I can actually get round to <laughs> some of my spring palettes. So what I tend to do is that I, I use makeup, but in the spring summertime, I have a lot of daylight. And so before I head out to work, I do all these eye looks for the eyeshadow palettes that I bought to make sure I can write all the reviews, right? So um, that I have like, at least like, I wanna do looks with every single shade in the palette before I review it. So there's always like three, four, sometimes two, one looks that I need to do with every single palette I buy. <laughs> and so of the palettes that I have in my collection, I, I can guarantee you I've used every single shade ever <laughs> um, because I just have <laughs> and um, but I, I am finding that maybe what I should just tr start doing more is that on a day off like today it's a Sunday that and this is actually what, something I tried out the other week where I do my full face of makeup do an eye look take it off redo my concealer and my eyeshadow base and do another look and take the pictures that way so that I can get through it a little bit more quickly and that I can actually on the daily really go back to using some of my old favorites. Like I love the, tea, the Too Faced Sweet Peach palette in the springtime. It's just that I always use springtime and summer to take all of these uh, to take all of these pictures that I don't really get around to using it. Right now it's already getting too dark in the morning before I start work to do an eye look to be able to take a picture of it. And then I go back to some of my OG favorite fall palettes like the Mono Renaissance, like the subculture, and in the winter time I go in with my Too Faced white chocolate, and that's why I know I love these palettes so much because I reach for them all the time when I can't do makeup for videos or for you know content that I'm creating. So that's uh, that's definitely something like I need to change in my habits, you could say. Uh, so that's why I feel now that I am neglecting some. That Sweet Peach for sure, that Nabla Soul Blooming palette that I keep recommending as a great spring palette. I definitely want to go back to those shades. So yeah. Uh, I, I just picked up my black eyeliner. This is by Marc Jacobs. It's a little Sephora point perk that I picked up last year. I just like sticking it in between my lashes and I sort of close my eyes. Oop, it's a bit too far. And then I just kind of wiggle it. All right, uh, setting spray, the Catrice Sungasm. It's about halfway gone, so I think I can use this up before the end of the year. Yay, another empty product. That's something I'm going to do in January. One of the very first videos that will go live in January is my empty products for the entire year of 2020. I've been saving up all the makeup bits, all the beauty bits that I've been using up all year to do one big giant empties video. I thought that could be fun. This feels really nice. All right, um, let's do a question so this can dry a little bit. What are your top five must-have makeup products? Like particular brands or just like products in general? Because if I just want to do a very quick makeup look, I go for concealer, um, a brow gel, uh, mascara, and a lipstick and bronzer. <laughs> like that's all I wear. Like I've, before... Like I just had fall break and the week before that I wasn't feeling the best. I, had, I went out to dinner with colleagues uh, as a goodbye uh, for, uh, for uh, leaving my job and I had something there that didn't agree with me. So I had this like 24 hour thing. It just wasn't great. <laughs> so I wasn't feeling the best, but I did want it to look uh, uh, like presentable on camera. So I definitely only did a bit of like like concealer and then some bronzer and so those would be like the five 
products that I just need to do a very basic look. Um, and then 20, uh, and this is not makeup related, but style related. And it says, how, when did you find a sense of style when it comes to fashion? And how would you describe your style? Um, so this is actually something I could do an entire separate video about. Um, but I am someone who has been into fashion ever since they were a kid. I had a favorite sweater when I was two, um, which was bright red and that I loved until this day. Red is one of my favorite colors and I just look good in red, you know? I, many of you have complimented me on like videos where I wear red lipstick. <laughs> Something happens, I put on a red shirt or a red lip and it works great. Um, so yeah, <laughs> red for sure. When did you find a sense of style? Well, I've always been someone who's just trying things out. Like I already mentioned being a bit of a tomboy when I was in my teens. But in terms of style, like I had a very particular style. Like I was wearing baggy jeans and like combat boots for a very long, like for most of my student years. And I cut my hair short and I was wearing oversized t-shirts. And then I got more into like, um, like dresses and heels and <laughs> that was like added into the mix and the thing is that what I find with me anyways is that I never do a complete 180 like I like one thing and then 10 years down the line I don't I completely not like it anymore it's like a bit of it will stick with me so I still really like quite like manly kind of looks like I really like brogues and like manly kind of shoes I've, I've owned a couple of, like a pair of Dr. Martens for such a long time and I still wear them, but I now wear them with dresses. So I tend to like, as fashion changes as an eye change, I definitely sort of create different renditions, you could say. So I've never, I, ne I don't really feel like I have one sense of style. It's just me. <laughs> and I've also been told this by colleagues actually, actually, like there's only like a handful of people within this company that I feel have a personal style and you're one of them. And I'm like, yeah, I, I guess so. Like I just pick and choose things that I like, that I like the look of. I try a lot. Like I only film fashion holes with the things I actually keep, but the amount of trial and error that goes on behind the scenes is a lot. Like I will just like look at something and go like, that look good on me? <laughs> and then very often the answer is just no. <laughs> and I don't really share those kind of like faux pas um, because it's just, if something doesn't look right on me, I don't feel confident and I only want to wear things that make me feel good. So that's sort of what I go with. So also something like this, it's a very bold eye that is very red tone that can make your eyes look very sickly. I'm pretty sure people are now sitting like at the ready going like, you look ill in this makeup look. I don't care, it makes me feel good. <laughs> and that's also how I sort of live my fashion life. When it comes to fashion, when it comes to makeup, I kind of just do what I like to do and I've always been different and a little bit more daring than most people. It wasn't even my mom putting me in these things sometimes. Like I already knew what I wanted to wear. Like when I was six, I was all about the very sort of like twirly dresses. Like all I wanted was a dress that if I spun around that it would like fly up. Like that was my dream dress. And I think my mom who made a lot of my clothes when I was a kid, actually just made the identical dress in like three different fabrics. <laughs> so, because I loved it so much. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's just something that happened for sure. And um, we, uh, yeah. So I've, I've always had this knack of like, just knowing what I want and what I want to wear when it comes to makeup, when it comes to fashion, like I've always had that. Um, so I, I don't really know when it started because it, it was just there. <laughs> um, so it's not something that I developed. Well, I definitely changed over the years, like that tomboy pixie haircut, dungaree wearing, combat boot wearing, student life I lived <laughs> is a very, very far cry from what I look like now. So yeah, I see my battery uh, flashing at me that it's almost empty. So I've been talking to you guys for over an hour, I'm sure. So I'm going to be putting on my favorite lipstick because that was tying into one of my other like questions that I just sort of have skipped on. Favorite lipsticks. These came back into stock this month. 
I placed myself an order because I love my order from last year so, so much. And it's the Lisa Eldridge uh, Velvet, what are they called? True Velvet Lipsticks. This is in the shade Velvet Muse because I knew with such, <laughs> with such an eye look, we're not also going to be wearing a red lip, people. We are going to be wearing a gorgeous warm tone nude. Oh, this shade goes with it so perfectly. And these are some of the best matte lipsticks that you can find on the market. They're creamy, but they're matte. They stay put all day. I have a few shades that I already used quite a bit. There's a review up of that on my blog, so I'll link it down below. But I actu actually just bought all the shades I was interested in. I don't have too many of the nudes because they seem a bit light and I like a darker nude like this on myself. But yeah, I just got them in the other day. So I was, I was swatching them again. I was like, oh, because what she does really well, I feel, is undertones. Like the tones of these lipsticks are just marvelous. They're so on point. So yeah, those were 20 questions. So that means that we've gone through all of the questions for this Q&A. I've done my makeup look, what do you think? This is my favorite like fall tone, berry eye kind of look. I know it's not for everyone. Fall vibes, fall vibes. All the fall vibes for sure. So thank you very much for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week and I've got a Catrice lipstick review video coming for you on Thursday. So I hope you would like to stay tuned and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye-bye.